If you've got a Ford 7.3 liter and you come out one morning and it just won't start for you, there could be several reasons for that. But one of the most common reasons that we run into is the fuel bowl heater uh, element. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to do a fuel bowl heater uh, element install video. And what's good about this truck that we've got in here today is this is an early 99 model truck. The early 99 model trucks can actually have two different heaters in them. And there are two different style heater fuel there are two different style fuel bowl heater elements. That's a mouthful. All right, your early style from your 94 to your 99 or your early 99 trucks is going to be an Alliant Power part number AP63409. And you can kind of see on this fuel heater element, this is, you know, just a brass ring. It's got the, uh, the actual elements soldered in here, soldered in here, uh, and then the wire on the top of it. This is your early model, AP63409. Your later model trucks, your 99 model trucks, uh, your 99 and a half model trucks all the way up to your 03s is an, a part number Alliant Power AP 63410. Now on these early model 99 trucks, that's the only model year that it could, it could actually have two different elements in. So you're actually going to have to take the cap off of the truck to find out which uh, elements in it is that or take your VN, call your Ford dealership and they should be able to tell you which part number it is. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do an install uh, on the fuel the fuel bowl filter heater element. Uh, first symptom of this is if you go out to start your truck and the truck absolutely will not start, what you want to do is you want to look inside on your fuse panel. The number 30 fuse is a fuel heater element fuse. If it's blown, more than likely what you've got is you've got a problem inside your fuel heater element. So if you put another fuse in there and it automatically blows, hey, don't put a bigger fuel heater or a, a larger fuse in it. Don't go from a 30 amp fuse to a 40 amp fuse thinking that's going to fix it. What you got to do is then is you've got to stop the truck and you've got to change out your fuel heater element. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you how All to right. do that. First thing on your install is you're going to be draining your fuel bowl. Drain your fuel bowl, just get yourself a catch pan. Oh, past your side of the engine, about midways of the cross member is where the fuel bowl uh, uh, discharge is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and open up our fuel bowl discharge. Yellow uh, handle on the back of it. It's actually already been opened up, but go ahead and open that up, and that's going to let your fuel bowl drain out. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the lid off of the uh, off the fuel filter after the filter drains. Now, to get the element out, and you can see this element's already fried. The element, it's actually self and it's actually come undone from the bottom of it. Uh, that's what's popping the fuse, is it's actually grounding out inside of there. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the old element. This is the early style element on this truck. So, uh, these are T20 screws that hold the element to the filter base, or to the filter bowl, I'm sorry. Again, they're T20s. And the fuel heater element actually holds down the, uh, the fuel filter uh, center piece there. So when you're bringing this out, you're going to be bringing up that uh, that black center section as well at the same time and it is spring loaded in there so watch what you're doing there all right pull this element out and watch your screws you can see where it's come the heater elements actually come unattached there the solder joints didn't hold okay so now to remove it what we're going to do is just unhook the electronic part of it from the side of the bowl there pull the element out Okay. All right, we're getting ready to reinstall our fuel filter now, uh, our, fuel, our fuel filter heater element now. Now going back in, what you want is you want your heater element with the solder side up and the wire will be closest to the terminal. So the terminal is here on the back side of the fuel bowl. 
is right here on the back side of the fuel bowl. Now that's where you're going to want your wire. And what your wire is going to do is it's actually going to come up and it's going to curl like this, and this is how it's going to sit. That way it doesn't put too much pressure on the uh, on the element itself. So what I've done here is I've taken my uh, the uh, the guide rod there to to the the fuel supply to the heads. What I've done is I've sat it down in the bottom of the bowl, and I've taken my element here, and I've kind of got my uh, my wire going the direction I want it to go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my wire and I'm going to get it started on the terminal. Okay. And if I can, I'll push it right on up. And I know that's hard to see on the video there. I just pushed it all the way up there. So now what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to take my element and turn it over and bring my my guide around. First I want to make sure my spring's oriented right there. I'm going to take this, my filter guide, I'm going to go ahead and pull it through the element, and get it straightened out, and get it ready. Okay, get it where it needs to go. And then that's going to just allow us to, what we'll do, be doing then is just turning the element around. that'll allow our wire to fold over. It won't put too much stress on the wire. It's not going to pull the terminal down or anything because you don't want to break the terminal off. You break the terminal off, your day's going to get real, real bad for a simple 15-minute install here. You're not going to be very pleased with yourself. So you're going to be using your hardware back, the two T20 screws that you originally removed. And be very careful not to cross thread these. If you start tightening them and they feel tight, back off, start again. They're pretty, there's a pretty good chance that if you're working on this, there's been somebody that's already worked on it on your truck at some point. Okay, now, now we've just snugged those down. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our fuel filter back in. Okay. All right, we've got our fuel filter cap real tight. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, leave our drain valve open for just a second. We're going to turn the truck on and let the, uh, the fuel pump run for just a minute. It's going to run down in the pan. That'll help to purge the canister. We've got our fuel bowl primed. Now what we're going to be looking for when we go inside the cab to make sure that we've done this job correctly is to make sure that we've got a way to start light now. When you blow the fuse for the fuel, the, the fuel heater element, what will happen is you will lose your weight to start light. That's a real good common indicator that your number 30 fuse is blown for the fuel heater uh, element. So that, it, that it's blown, you'll lose your weight to start light. So what we're going to be looking for on this is to see we've got our weight to start light back. For our weight to start light's back, we should, be, we should have a good install. Truck should start.
This completes our install of our Align Power AP63409. That's the fuel filter heater element for the early uh, model set power strokes of 94 to uh, some of the uh, early model uh, 99s. So uh, that completes our install. If you've got a question on this or any of our other installs, just give us a call. Thank you.